Once you have considered and developed your research questions, the next stage of the process is to think about a research strategy or plan that will generate the information to answer your research question. Developing a plan for your research starts with selecting a type of research design and then selecting the methods with which to collect your data. A research design essentially provides the framework for collecting and analysing the data. Choosing the type of research design depends on a number of things, whether you are looking at simply to describe what is happening, whether it is important to be able to examine why things are happening and express causal connections, whether you want to generalise to the wider population, or whether you want to examine those behaviours over time. Of course there is also the methodological orientation of the researcher, of that's of you, to consider, and this can have a bearing on the choice of the research design. Sometimes researchers are particularly orientated towards research that is um, qualitatively or quantitatively focused. Other practical issues come into play such as time, limitations um, and cost. In practice these factors often very strongly dictate what research designs are open to you. Whilst conducting a research project repeatedly over a couple of years may methodologically be the best way to run a research project, funding and time constraints may actually dictate a shorter and less costly time frame. We'll explore these issues around resourcing a little later in this toolkit. So when we say about research designs, there are actually four main research designs. These are experimental, cross-sectional, longitudinal and case study and we're going to explore each one of those in the next slides. So the first one we're going to look at is experimental research. Now experimental research is exactly as the name suggests. It explores the effect of one variable on another with all the other variables being held constant or being controlled so that they do not interfere. As such this method of research um, usually looks to establish cause and effect. It is then often associated with research in the natural sciences and is common, for example, in health research. Experimental design is less frequently used within social research. This is because in social research it is difficult to manipulate the variables that we're interested in, such as, say, for example, somebody's socioeconomic group. Further to this, there are, of course, ethical issues. Um, it's not ethically possible to allow uh, two groups of people to um, different social settings where one group is more disadvantaged in a more disadvantaged setting than another. It's just not ethically viable. The primary formats of experimental research are what we call the classic experimental design and the quasi-experimental design. With a classical um, experimental approach, it is just as you imagine in the science class with a random allocation of each subject to either one of two groups, either a control group where no experiment is performed um, and an experimental group. Each group is pre-tested and then the experiment is performed on the experimental group. A post-test is completed on both groups and the results are examined to establish cause and effect. An easy example to think of is drug trials. So using two groups where a drug is given to the experimental group and a placebo is given to the control group and the results analysed to understand the effects of the drug. Here we have an example of a classic experimental design using a change in temperature to examine the change in the state of a liquid. In this case temperature is the independent variable, the variable that has caused um, that has causal impact and the change in the state of the liquid is the variable that feels the effect, so it is the dependent variable. When it is not possible to use a classical um, experimental design, a quasi-experimental design may be more appropriate. Quasi-experimental research is similar to experimental research, but it does not adhere to all of the principles, um, and that is primarily the principle of random selection. Um, subjects are allocated to groups according to um, attributes that are already occurring and are not randomly allocated to those groups by the researcher. This element of not being randomly uh, allocated does impact on the internal validity of the research as we cannot be sure 
that x actually caused y uh, if some form of engineering of the groups is present. There are two main types of quasi-experimental research. We have non-equivalent control group and before and after. With non-equivalent control, this type of research has both experimental and control groups um, that the subjects taking part in the research naturally belong to. With before and after, there is no control group and subjects taking part in the research are measured pre-test then subjected to the manipulation of the independent variable and then measured again post-test. This type of research design is common with um, evaluation research where the objective is to find out whether a particular intervention has actually achieved its goals. Having looked at experimental research designs, there are a number of non-experimental research designs. The first we're going to look at is cross-sectional uh, research and this is the most used type of research design within social research. Information is collected across more than one case um, and often across a large number of cases at a single point in time and this provides a snapshot. So it is often thought of um, as the classic social survey design. A case of course um, we, we refer to uh, being collected across a number of cases or a large number of cases. A case can be anything. Um, it can be a person, which is what we usually think of, but it, it can also be an organisation, a business, a community, schools or even a country. Uh, it is important here not to confuse this overall approach to designing research with a survey, um, as you know them. F filling out your census form or being stopped in the street and being asked to complete the survey and so on. A survey is simply a way of collecting a data. Cross-sectional research design is about the way of designing your research so that you are collecting information across more than one person, say at one point in time, i.e. on Tuesday the 1st of March. To collect your information you may use any number of methods. Structured observation, for example, um, watching how a person uses a product um, when they first or watching where they go when they first go into a supermarket. Structured observation is frequently used um, in market research. Um, you might uh, use official statistics and do secondary analysis and of course you may survey people but cross-sectional research is a design um, it isn't a method which surveying is. Longitudinal research design is about collecting data over time on the same subjects. As such, it is useful when trying to understand social change. Data is collected at two or more points in time, and the data from those points is compared, and, and uh, you look at what's happened from the first period to the second. There are, of course, um, these are, of course, expensive in both time and cost, so they're not used as frequently as cross-sectional design is um, in social research. Another thing is don't confuse longitudinal with repeated cross-sectional, um, which is a repeated study on different subjects um, and not the same subjects. So longitudinal always deals with the same subjects over time. Repeated cross-sectional, you're basically repeating your cross-sectional research design over time and you'll be using different subjects. So here's um, an example of what we mean by longitudinal and how, how you uh, progress it over time. Um, so say you take a uh, longitudinal, can be done over two, three, four, five, or however many times you need to. Um, so in the first wave, you're working with individuals, say for example a recent graduate, um, and you're examining um, their course, so they, the degree course that they've taken, the results of that, um, the first employment details and so on and so forth. In the second way, so maybe you go and interview them a year later, um, so you interview the same person and you have a look at whether they have undertaken any more uh, education, whether they're working towards a professional qualification, what their current employment details, um, where they live and where they're working. And then maybe you go and interview them, that same person again, uh, in another year's time, and you look at the same thing and see if anything has changed. 
Now with longitudinal um, research design there are actually two main branches. Um, the first one is what we call panel studies and the second are cohort studies. Now panel studies um, involve collecting data from samples at two more points in time. An example of this is uh, the British Household Survey. This provides information on social interest issues such as household organisation, employment, housing, income, wealth, health, um, socioeconomic values, residential mobility, all sorts of different things like that. The British Household Survey was designed as an annual survey of adults aged 16 and over with a sample of 5,000 interviewed in successive waves. It provides the UK component of the European Community Household Panel Survey. If you want to find out more um, or explore this particular survey then visit the Economic and Social Data Service, the ESDS, using the web link on the slide. The second type of longitudinal research design is what we call a cohort study. These involve returning to a sample of participants. Um, participants in this case are a particular cohort um, and a cohort is a group of people who share a common characteristic or experience within a defined period. So, for example, doing longitudinal research with a sample of people who were born in 1950. An example of a cohort study is the Millennium Cohort Study. Um, this follows the lives of a sample of nearly 19,000 babies that were born between the 1st of September 2000 and the 31st of August 2001 in England and Wales and between uh, 22nd of November 2000 and the, third, uh, the 11th of January 2002 in Scotland and Northern Ireland. Um, the information has been, has been collected um, from parents um, when the children were aged 9 months and then again at around 3 years of age. The sample design allowed for disproportionate representation of families that live in areas of child poverty. Um, in smaller countries of the UK and in areas where they have a significantly high proportion of ethnic minority populations. The first survey recorded the circumstances of pregnancy and birth um, as well as those all important early months of life and the, socio, um, the social and economic background of the family um, in which the children have been born. Again, if you want to find out more um, about this or any other type of survey like this, you can go to the, e, uh, the ESDS um, using the web link on the slide. Now, case study research, um, our fourth type of research design, looks at the complexity of a single um, particular case rather than quantifying and understanding relationships between variables during um, you know, two or more collection points. Cases, they can be individuals, businesses, organisations, events, geographic areas and so on. Case study research is often thought of as qualitative in nature, but case study research design can of course be used when looking um, to quantitatively describe what is going on. Case study research is particularly useful because of the depth of information that is collected when there is um, little known or little understood about a particular topic. Having looked at different types of research designed from experimental to non-experimental, it is important to note at this stage that these types of designs are not standalone. A research project can of course use more than one. As you can imagine, you might be looking doing research looking at household composition, but rather than the general population, um, and you might be looking instead up at a particular neighbourhood. You may, also be, you may also be doing in-depth work with a particular community of people, but be conducting that research with the same people over months or years. An exercise that might be helpful um, to have a go at is um, have a look at this particular research uh, project and see what kind of research designs you might come up with to answer the question. So, potential research project has been identified where there is a growing level of public concern about a lack of recycling facilities. Um, a large proportion of packaging is still unable to be recycled. So, using the information that you've gathered from this uh, series of slides, try designing a research strategy that will seek to identify the level of public concern, um, why certain types of packaging are used, and why some are not able to be recycled. 